You probably recall Devin from Cognition Lab, which was supposed to be the first AI software engineer, and it's supposed to work as a team member on your team. In theory, you are supposed to assign it a task, and then it's supposed to complete that task autonomously and return you the results. But how good is this in practice? Well, we finally have some independent tests. This one is from Hamil Hussain, who I respect a lot. So he posted on X regarding Devin, the AI software engineer. Here he says, we couldn't find many reviews of people using it for real tasks. So we went MKBHD mode and put Devin through its spaces. We documented our, our findings here. Would love to know if others have had a different experience. And here's the blog post he's referring to, thoughts on a month with Devin. This is from the answer.ai team. Okay, so before we look at that blog post and uh, some of the findings, I just want to say that uh, when it comes to my own coding tasks, I use AI tools such as Cursor. And I would say like they easily do 70 to 80 percent of my coding tasks. But I personally like Cursor because there's this human in the loop component. So if something goes wrong, I can help it fix it or uh, tell it how to fix it. Now, Devin is supposed to be a completely automated system. Based on my experience with completely autonomous agents, they can get stuck and would hallucinate. And for a complex tasks, they are not really reliable yet. Now, there is a lot of hype around autonomous agents and even software generation tools. But keep in mind, this is just the first iteration so from here onward, we'll definitely see improvements. And hopefully this is the worst it, it's ever going to be. Now, with that being said, let's look at this blog post. When Devon was initially released, it could solve about 14% of the real world GitHub issues end to end on SWE benchmark and was uh, almost three times better than the previous system. So this was a pretty significant improvement. In the blog post, they says that while uh, Twitter was full of enthusiasm, we couldn't find many detailed accounts of people actually using it. So they decided to put it through paces, testing it against a wide range of real world tasks. This is our story, a thorough real world attempt to work with one of the most hyped products of 2024. So what exactly is Devon? It's an autonomous uh, software solution. And the major differentiating factor of this solution compared to others is that it has its own infrastructure. So Devon has its own computing environment. You basically talk to Devon through Slack. And after that, it spins off its full computing environment. It has a, a browser code editor and a shell script. So it can install different dependencies, read documentation, and even a preview web application that it creates. So very similar in functionality to the artifacts feature in Cloud. So here's kind of the interface that it looks like. Basically, you are interacting with this autonomous system using Stack. And here's a preview of how Devon's workspace looks like. They tested Devon uh, over a course of a month on a number of different tasks, but they categorized them into three different categories. First one was creating new projects from scratch. Second was performing research tasks. And the third one was analyzing and modifying existing projects. These are the type of tasks you would expect a software engineer to do. But the results were surprisingly bad. So out of the 20 tasks that were assigned, it failed on 14, it succeeded on three, and you were inconclusive. So the success rate is only about 15%. They provide details of all the tasks in, later in the blog post. We're going to look at some of them. And if you look at those, some of these can be easily done with other uh, coding assistants like Cursor by having human in the loop or even uh, something like ChatGPT or Cloud directly will be able to solve uh, some of these tasks pretty easily. Now, I think the most concerning part is this. Even more telling was that we couldn't discern any patterns to predict which task would work. Tasks that seemed similar to our early successes would fail in unexpected ways. I think this is a bigger issue because if, if you cannot find a pattern or categories of tasks for which um, a system could be good, 
then it's a very unpredictable system. And then that unpredictability will really hinder the usage of any autonomous system. Now, they had initial success with some of their early tests. For example, the first one was to pull data from Notion database into Google Sheets. So Devon was able to do this with surprising competence. It was able to navigate the uh, Notion API documentation by itself completely autonomously. And then it was able to walk the developer through setting up necessary credentials in Google Cloud Console. So this was the part in which it needed human interaction. This whole process took about one hour, but only a few minutes of human interaction because it needed the Google Cloud credentials. And at the end, Devon shared a link to a perfectly formatted Google Sheet containing the data that was requested. And they write, this felt like a glimpse into the future an AI that could handle the glue code task that consume so much developer time, right? So it seems like they had a really good start. There was another task in which they asked it to create a planet uh, tracker for debunking claims about historical position of Jupiter and Saturn. Seems like it was able to do that. And the best part was that the developer guided the whole process through phone because the interface is just a Slack a bot. Now, as they started scaling up their test, everything went south. So tasks that uh, seem straightforward often took days rather than hours, with Devon getting stuck in technical dead ends or producing overly complex, unusable solutions. And this is uh, a known problem with completely autonomous agent systems because they will try different solutions. And if things don't work, they will come up with more and more variants. And sometimes they just hallucinate. So here is an example of hallucination. When asked to deploy multiple applications to a single railway deployment, something that railway does not support, instead of identifying this limitation, Devon spent a day attempting various approaches and hallucinating features that did not exist. And then they highlight that the most frustrating aspect wasn't the failure themselves, because all tools have limitations. And I think we know that by now but rather how much time they had to spend trying to salvage these attempts. Now, for each of these three categories, they discuss them in a lot more details and have some concrete examples which are worth reading through. But I want to read through the reflections of the team members who actually tested this system. So here's the first one. Task it can do are those uh, that are so small and well-defined that I may as well do them myself, faster my way. Larger tasks where I might see time savings, I think it will likely fail at, so no real niche where I'll want to use it. Keep in mind, we are talking about experienced software developers. So most of these tools will help you build small applications, but if you are working in complex systems, that's where the cracks will show up. Now, here's another reflection. I had initial ex excitement at how close it was because I felt I could tweak a few things and then slowly got frustrated as I had to change more and more to end up at the point where I would have been, where I would have been better off starting from scratch and going step by step. I can personally relate to this, even with some of the other uh, coding tools. You will see that they will start off really good, but then in the middle, they will lose track and, and it gets really frustrating but if it's a completely autonomous system where you don't really have any control on it well good luck in that case and the last reflection is from Hamil Hussein so Devon struggled to use internal tooling that is critical at answer uh, AI which in addition to other issues made it difficult to use this is despite providing Devon with copious amount of documentation and examples I haven't found this to be an issue with tools like Cursor, where there is more opportunity to nudge things in the right direction more incrementally. And I think uh, for the time being, this is the way of uh, doing software development. You want to have human in the loop, which can correct these software engineering agents if there are mistakes. A completely autonomous systems are not there yet. They will definitely improve over time. But having human in the loop is 
critical at the moment. And I completely agree with this. In contrast to Devon, we found workflows where developer drive more like cursor, avoid most issues we faced with Devon. So what exactly were those tasks? Uh, so we talked about Planet Tracker, and here's the description. I wanted to debunk some claims about historical position of Jupiter and Saturn, and Devon nailed that task. Now, the second one which we looked at was migrating data from Notion into Google Sheets. This was also a success. But after that, there are other tasks like multi-app deploys of Railway. This was inconclusive because the feature actually do, uh, does not exist in Railway or it does not support. Then generate synthetic data and upload it to Trust. So the task was they asked Devon to create synthetic data for an LLM observability platform called Brain Trust that the user wanted to test. So Devon created overly complex code that was hard to understand and got struck trying to fix the errors. We end up using Cursor to do this step by step in an iterative fashion. Now other failures are creating an integration between two applications or do web scra uh, scraping papers by following Google Scholar links. This is something which it should be able to do pretty easily, but it still failed. Because Devon went into a rabbit hole of trying to parse HTML that it seems like it couldn't get out of. It got stuck and went to sleep. There are other interesting failures as well. So I'll put a link to this post. I'd highly recommend to go through each one of them. And this really shows you the current state of the art when it comes to completely autonomous systems for coding. I really like their conclusion. So apart from discussing their experimentation, here's a section that really resonated with me. So this reflects on a pattern we have observed repeatedly in AI tooling. Social media excitements and company valuations have minimal relationship to real world utility. Now in this channel, I cover a lot of different AI tools and I personally also get excited uh, about some of the releases. But what I always recommend is to try these tools yourself and make sure they, they work for your application. So they say, we have found that the most reliable signal comes from detailed stories of users, shipping products and services. And for now, we are sticking with the tools that let us drive the development process while providing AI assistance along the way. Stick with the tools that works for you. You don't really have to chase every new shiny object or every new AI tool that is released. These are early days for Devon or autonomous uh, coding agents in general. So over time, they will definitely improve. And seems like the team behind Devon is taking these feedbacks very seriously. Here's a person on the Devon team. He tweeted to Hamil Hussain. The fact uh, is that many teams found use cases with the reliability that they need and many teams haven't genuinely appreciate uh, you giving it a try and sharing your thoughts. And here's the C uh, CEO of uh, a Cognition Lab. So, hey Hamel, thanks for trying out Devon and really appreciate your thoughtful feedback. Saw your breakdown of three major categories of use cases you tried. These are the categories and then we would like to get better at all of them in the future. But Devon is primarily focused on contributions to the existing repos today. So we would particularly love to get your thoughts on how to improve there. But they genuinely seem to be interested in learning more and improving the system. Anyways, I personally found this blog post to be very interesting and of value and wanted to share it with the community. Link to the blog post is going to be in the video description. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.